Oh man, she did what? Why is the government always lying? That's not your fault. That was your mother's job. I know it's up. It's hard, but it's fair. If we don't get our heads out of our collective asses, we're going to be lost in the sauce. You knew he was sorry when you met him at VHS. Come on, baby girl. What's the solution? Look, I know I'm fucked. Welcome to the Angry Nerd Podcast. My name is Arshawn Wade, a.k.a. The Angry Nerd. Tonight's topic, Ahmad Avery, murdered by overzealous vigilantes, or was he killed for, excuse me, due to resisting a citizen's arrest? That's, that's pretty much what's being put out there, folks. Um... For all my listeners out there on Spotify and iTunes, if you hear me referencing the chat, I'm talking to my people on Facebook Live. I'm broadcasting live on Facebook Live, as well as recording this for Spotify and um, iTunes. But getting back to the topic, Ahmad Avery, murdered by overzealous vigilantes, or was he killed in the midst of resisting citizens' arrest? Because I heard that's what um, the uh, McMichael duo can't tell which one's the dad, which one's the son. Let me give some pretext to this uh, conversation before I dive right into it and get to giving my my opinions. Apparently, sometime back in February, a young man by the name of Ahmad Avery was jogging on some afternoon, and a guy saw him saw him jogging and thought that he was involved in some sort of break-in or something like that that had taken place over the course of some time in their neighborhood. And he decides to go back home, get his son, get in their truck, bear up arms, and go chase this kid down or go find him while he's on his jogging route. I saw the video. It's a very disturbing video. Anybody who has a sensitive spirit or anybody who just, you know, isn't used to seeing horrible things like that in real life, uh, I, I don't suggest that you watch it because it was very graphic. It was very disturbing. And there was there was nothing right about it, from my opinion. I will try to frame this topic um, unbiasedly. I will try to be impartial. But it's so difficult when you're faced with such a, a horrible wrong. Like anybody with two eyes and a heartbeat knows that it was wrong. Nothing was good about it. It was all bad. Uh, So anyway, in the video, you can see where the young man's jogging and their truck is parked in his path and he goes to go around the truck. And on the blind side of the truck, one of the McMichaels is standing there holding a a rifle. The other one's in the back of the truck bed with a 357 Magnum. And when he draws down on the kid, the kid tries to fight the gun away from him. And I think that's what anybody would do in that situation when you got two strange men who are not cops, who aren't uh, in a uniform or anything. Just two strange men with guns pull up on the side of you while you're jogging. What would you do? What would anybody do in that situation? Most people are going to try to fight for their lives. And let me tell you something. If this was an accident... Body language didn't tell me that because you see he shot the kid three times. Bam, bam, bam with this rifle. The kid stumbles off and he falls on his face and it's just heartbreaking. But when the guy turns away from him, he didn't he never went and checked on the kid to see if he was okay. Like trained officers would do. They would go check on the guy and see if the guy's okay, see what his injuries are, and then they would call for backup, they would call for an ambulance. That w- that's what trained officers would typically do in this situation. But these aren't trained officers. These are two random Joes with rifles and handguns going out to see about the bad guy, the, the assumed bad guy. That's what we're talking about here. 
and he shoots the kid. The kid falls down and he turns around and just walks off. The guy turns around, just walks off. And let me tell you something about communication between human beings. 90% of what we say is nonverbal, facial uh, expressions, hand gestures, body language. And that guy's body language told me that he felt like he was justified, job well done. And he, in fact, was not. And I'll tell you why. Because now their attorney is trying to use um, citizen's arrest to even meet the elements involved in a citizen's arrest, there has to be a crime being committed. Not, I think that he might have committed a crime or I'm going to investigate. No, that is for someone who is an officer of the court. That is for someone who is an officer of the law. Now, if this kid was in the middle of breaking into a house and someone gunned him that we'd be having a whole different conversation right now. But that is not what happened. What happened was two men decided to bear up arms against a young man for whatever reason they want to come up with. If you ask me, these look like two hillbillies who were out to do harm to somebody. I, they had, a, a, you know, the uh, rust beaten pickup truck one old boy driving and one in the back slipping on top of him. You can go on, Bubba, let's get it. Come on, Bubba. And they went out there. It was just like something that you would see on Mississippi Burning or Roots or any of those other old slave movies where Bubba and his homeboy went over there and they killed some people for no reason. Because that's what it looked like. And after he, he had no type of remorse on his face. He didn't have it. There was nothing about his facial expression. There was nothing about his body language that said, oh man, I might've just did a bad thing. Oh snap, I just killed somebody. It looked like to me that was not his first time doing something like that. Most normal human beings, after they've done something like that, they're gonna have some sort of you know, remorse like, oh my God, what did I just do? What just happened? There was none of that from this guy. I didn't see anything like that. So I have a couple of questions here. What are the elements that have to be present in order to make a citizen's arrest? And I kind of outlined it just a little bit already. You have to be in the commission of a crime for Joe Blow citizen to stop and say, hey, I'm making a citizen's arrest. You have to be in the middle of robbing a bank with money in hand and pistol in the other before any Joe Blow can decide that I'm going to make a citizen's arrest. There is no way in the world that there was anything close to that. After we watched this video, there is nothing that suggests that this young man had committed a crime. Unless running down the street as a young black man is a crime. This ain't the 60s. This ain't the 50s. We, can, we jog. We work out, people. We do that. You know, I have another question. Should untrained citizens be allowed to act as officers of the law? My answer to that question is, heck no. Why? Hell, we got enough police officers that aren't properly trained and who are out here killing citizens uh, accidentally. We certainly don't need to put guns in the hand of Joe Blow citizen and say, go out there and fight crime. No way. These guys wanted to, in my opinion, kill a young black boy. And they succeeded in doing that. And it appears that the judicial system is already setting the stage to walk these guys through the system. It appears that the stage is already being set for these guys to get off of this heinous crime. That's the way it looks. And, and it is very disheartening because I remember several years back when young Trayvon Martin was put in the same situation, murdered by an overzealous vigilante with a grudge that he was murdered in vain. And what's worse is some years later, George Zimmerman is running around the country signing packages of Skittles. I don't think that that's the behavior of somebody who remorsefully kills a kid. You know what I mean? There's no remorse in that. And I'll go ahead and say it just because I ain't messed up. But until the people in these communities where these things happen decide to look up, and ante up and do something about it. All that marching and singing sad and crying and wearing black dresses, 
that ain't gonna amount to a hill of beans. Uh, I think the uh, famous anarchist uh, Emma Goldman says, voting doesn't change anything, bullets do. Her words, not mine, but that really put something on my spirit. They, uh, there's an ancient African proverb that says, the slaves that are whipped the easiest get whipped the most. As long as we take this laying down, allowing people to kill our kids in the streets, as long as we allow them to brutalize our, our husbands and our wives, our cousins and our brothers, as long as we allow this kind of crap to go on, it's going to keep going on until somebody says, hey, get your foot up off of me and decides to fight back. And people are going to say, well, you know what, Arshad, you mean people going to go to jail. That's the difference between the people today and the people back then. They knew, they knew that that was a possibility. But let me tell you, freedom and liberty in this country are worth those kinds of sacrifices. And they knew that. And somewhere along the lines, we lost that, that zeal to get things done the way that they got things done back in the day. Uh, let's, let's move on to another question. Has anybody been to Georgia? Has anybody actually been to Georgia? Last year I was in Georgia. My company sent me to Georgia uh, for a training exercise and I was down there for a week. And I remember being in a, a convenience store and I looked around and this was long before COVID-19 came out. But the, 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 the next customer behind me was a you know typical redneck looking white guy, you know, which I don't care, but he was an abnormally large distance away from me. And I turned around and I looked at him and I was like, why is he standing way back there? Okay, maybe he's a germaphobe, whatever. And I noticed that the, uh, the clerk, I had enough items to where I should have had a bag. You know what I mean? She didn't bag my items. She wouldn't touch the money in my hand. And when she gave me my change back, she put it on the counter, pushed it toward me and pushed all my things and said, you need to get on out of here. And I realized that the sun was going down. And then I started picking up on the vibes and the energy just because I ain't in tune with racism and stuff like that. You know, because I have a pretty vast array of friends, black, white, maybe, I don't really care. So I'm not just all the way tuned in like that. And then I start paying attention. My black radar goes off and I've noticed all eyes are on me and I'm getting this look like, hey, yo, it's time to go, homie. And that's kind of like the energy. That was the vibe. And I was like, oh, Snoop, let me get my Snickers and my Reese's and stuff and get on out of here and get back to the motel room. And that was the last time that I, during that week that I stayed down there, I made sure that I had my snacks and whatever I needed in my motel room before the sun started going down. That's just the kind of vibe that I got from those folks down there. And I don't think that these gentlemen who killed this young man are any different than those folks who are in that establishment giving me those dirty looks. Let's just be real about it. Now, one thing I do want to say, because I know that there's some good white people out there, just like I know there were some good white people that helped us out during slavery. They were called Quakers and abolitionists, things like that. So I get that. This is a message to all the good white folks out there. All my good white friends, this is what I want you to do. I want you to find your inbred cousins and stuff like that. And I want you to go down there and tell them, hey, man, y'all lost the war. It's over with. Uh, put your Confederate flags away. Okay, y'all lost. Uh, these folks are all right. Listen, I got a whole bunch of black friends. One of them is married to my sister. They're good people. I need y'all to go put a public service announcement out for these kinds of folks because this has got to stop because I'm telling you, they say that people like this, just like that kid uh, who killed those folks in the church, they're trying to stay to start a race war. And let me tell you something, good white people, the good white people who aren't on the bull crowd, if you do not take it upon yourself to check one of these crappy racist people, you are complicit in that race war that they are trying to wage. So not saying something and, oh, that's not my fight. I don't have a dog in that fight. Yes, you do. Because where do you think if a race war starts in the United States of America, where do you think it's going to happen? Right here in our streets. So you need to, it is 100% everybody who is not on the bullcrap's responsibility to weed these people out in society, call them out, ostracize them, and get those folks out from around us. 
because there are a whole bunch of us who want to live a quality life and who ain't about that foolishness. But let me tell you something. As a young black man, it puts a bad taste in my mouth when I see crap like that going on. It puts a bad taste in my mouth when I see people in the comments talking about, well, we don't really know what all went on. Uh, brother, do you have eyes? I, I see what just happened. It doesn't matter what that young man may or may not have just done. I'll tell you like this, knowing a little bit about the law, once someone is leaving, even if they've done wrong to you, once somebody is fleeing, that becomes murder, okay? That becomes murder. If the kid lived, it would have been first degree battery. That's what would have happened. Once somebody is trying to get away from you, okay, the threat is gone. It's one thing when someone is advancing on you, when someone is attacking you and defending yourself, that is something very different. But that's not what happened in this situation. In this situation, I watched two grown men kill a kid in the middle of the street and I have an opinion about those cell phone soldiers, the people who sit back and watch tragedies happen and don't say anything and they just record it. They just record it. That makes me so angry. Do you know it would have been a very different outcome if the man with the phone had said, hey, man, what y'all doing over there? Hey, cut that out. That's all it takes is somebody knowing that someone else is on the scene to keep some bull crap from happening. That's all it takes a lot of time. I mean, he had the gonads to stand there and record. So why not say something? Why not try to avoid one of these terrible things happen instead of... Oh my God, this is my chance to go viral. That is disgusting. But prejudice is real. Uh, racism is real. And we need to root it out. Those white people that say, oh, that's the old time. And, and we're past that. Well, you've got some inbred cousins that you need to get that point across to. That's exactly what you need to be doing. Because if you believe that, you need to be preaching to those people who still have those old views. I feel like if person flies the uh, Confederate flag in this country, that should be looked upon as an act of treason because y'all lost. So y'all's flags and statues, all that stuff should have got put up in a closet somewhere, put in an incinerator or something because it's supposed to be one flag in this country. Every time I see old Dixie, <laughs> every time I see old Dixie, I, I instantly hear the N-word, and I'll get these friends of mine who'll say, oh, it's just about heritage. Oh, it's just about, well, for me, it's about the N-word, okay? And it's about people who are of your hue and your ilk who would like to call people of my hue and my ilk that word. That's what it's about for me. And I think that any uh, United States citizen should view it that way. How many wars have been fought on United States soil? Just one, that one, and that flag should be banned. I bet you if I folded up my blue flag and put it in my back pocket and walked down the street, the Little Rock Police Department would have something to say about it. They'd pull me over and they'd start asking me a barrage of questions like they tend to do. I wish they had that same zeal whenever they saw one of those Confederate flags because that's a gang, that's a terrorist group the way I look at it. Why are you bringing up the Confederate flag, Arshan? I'll tell you why. Because those are the people who fly the Confederate flag and who will tell people when they're in black people's face. I notice these things always happen to little brothers, you know, little bitty guys off by themselves. It's never when Pookie and Ray Ray and them are all around and the man man and them are over there. It never happens like that. It's always some small off by itself brother that this kind of stuff happens to. But when they around the Debo's and everybody like that, oh man, this tattoo, it don't mean nothing. It's just about heritage. You know, I'm from the South, man. It's just about being Southern. Bull crap, man. You know that Ray Ray and them will peck on you if you talk that talk like you do when you're around your cohorts. You know what I mean? And well, like I said, all the good black people and all the good white people, we need to find these people out, ostracize them, and oust them from society. We need to get these people out from around us because I'll tell you what it does. It does put a bad taste in your mouth as a young black man for white people. It does make you look sideways at these people like, are they really cool? Are they really okay? Are they just doing that in my face? Personally, I know that not to be true because I know some good people. I know not only black and white, I know good people. And I know that I know the difference between good people and bad people. And I know that it's not 
it's, it's not uh, about color. I know that something like being good or being bad or being moral or immoral isn't limited to something so small as color. You'd be silly to think that, oh, well, he's bad because he's black. You got to be foolish. Where you been living for the last 30 years, man? Under a rock somewhere? Get out of here. There are good people in the world, and we have to link up, we have to get together, and we have to start getting these people out from around us. Whenever they're talking about calling out for jury duty and stuff like that, we need to be on the scene. Look, I'll volunteer to be in the jury because we need to get this guy out of here. We need to get him out from around us. This guy's dangerous. And these young men are dangerous. A father and son duo gunning down a young black guy on the street who's running. And I, and I take special interest in this because I'm a young black dude who happens to run on the street from time to time. And I would hate to think that somebody would walk past me and say, hey, Bubba, I think that old boy's doing something there. And then next thing I know, they're shooting at me. You know, like, I, I'd hate to think that we moved to a place in society in 2020, we are seeing some stuff that happened 70 years ago. And we're seeing it happen. And what's worse is the media is complicit in keeping it covered up because this happened two months ago. We're just now seeing any type of coverage on it. And, and where are we seeing the coverage? Social media. That's what's crooked. I didn't see it on Fox. Oh, no, I didn't see it on MSNBC. I saw it on Facebook. I don't believe everything that I see on Facebook. I have to fact check things that I see on Facebook. I know that fake news exists. But after you see the video, man... It's disheartening. It's disheartening. I thought that uh, with the coronavirus and the killer hornets, you know, and stimulus checks, I just thought we'd be sitting around and having fun and hanging out. We're at home with our kids. I didn't think tragedies like this would still be going on. There are very few of us who can move around in the city freely as it is. And those of us who are, are out here committing heinous acts like this. It's very heartbreaking. It's very horrible. And I, I just urge you and encourage you guys, when you hear people talking that talk, because there are signs. Let me tell you something. I hate to be prejudiced, but we live through prejudice. We live through stereotypes. Have you seen a picture of these cats? They look like they say the N-word. They just got that look about them. You know what I mean? Like if these guys, one of them walked on the side of me, walked on, one walked on the other side of me, I would be like, okay, it's getting ready to go down. And I would get ready for a fist fight because these guys look like that's what they do. They hurt black people. That's what they look like. And from what I saw in the video, it looks like that's what their intentions were. And it looks like they satisfy those intentions. And unfortunately, my good white friends, that does reflect on your community. The same way when Ray Ray and them mess up and they on the news looking crazy like this. The same way they on there looking crazy reflects on us, this reflects on you guys. And the same way that we ostracize those guys and say, hey, man, we're not down with that foolishness. We need you guys to do that, too. We need you guys to hold your people to task just like we hold our people to task. Now, I know some good, good white folks out there, and I know some white folks who don't stand for the bull crap. And what we need to do is we need all of you guys to get on those rednecks' heads. We need you on their head because let's just be honest, just rightly speaking, it ain't right, but I'm speaking rightly right now. White folks got a little bit more of a voice out there than, than brothers do. I think we kind of got a bad rap with all that marching and stuff in the 60s. So they like all oh, the brothers is whining again, you know, so I don't really think they all the way take us seriously when we have something to say, when we get out there and we speak what's true. Even though it's true, they're just like, oh, there they go again, singing their songs and whining. So we need our Caucasian brothers who are of the same mind to get out there and say, hey, no, that's bullcrap, man. I need y'all to get out there and I need you guys to rally the troops. I need you. Uh, no, dude, I'm telling you, man, that's wrong. We're not going to stand for it. I need you guys doing that. <laughs> I need you to do that 100% because what it's doing is it's creating I'm sorry, it's enforcing the us versus them dynamic that is already existing in this country. And that's what we don't need. Not if we 
plan to get past the COVID-99 and get past the killer hornets and we're supposed to come out of this and, 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 and boost our economy and we're supposed to thrive as Americans. It's, it's not going to happen if we still, if allowing stuff like this to go on around us. We cannot allow things like this to go on around us. And it takes unification, unification of blacks, whites, Mexicans, Puerto, everybody pulling together and saying, anybody that's like, I don't care if you are the same color as me. If you're not for the right things, let's get them out from over here. And I know some of my brothers, they think about snitching. You know, that's one thing that's prevalent in, in our community is, oh man, I ain't no snitch. Here's something that a good counselor helped me get over that mentality with. She asked me, Arshan, if you saw, if you were locked in a cell and you saw a little child sitting out in the day room and you saw a known child molester coming up, getting ready to molest the child, there's no way you can get to him. Would you call the authorities? I said, man, I beat the door down. I'd get the guard in there. I would, why would you do that, Arshan? Because it, it's the right thing to do. And instantly the juices changed in my brain and I saw things differently. It was. It's not snitching to do the right thing. We need to get these people out of our communities. We need to get these people out from around us. Before they killed this young man, I have a 100% nagging suspicion that these guys have demonstrated the kind of behavior that would tell people they do something like that. There are always signs, there are always symptoms. And these guys are no different than anybody else. I'm sure they've done some other things, uh, bar fights and, and smack somebody up at the grocery store, stuff that the local downtown police would call, uh, you know, just good old boys having a good time. You know, so we need to peep these signs out and we need to root people like this out from around us. Now, I want to uh, go through the chat real quick and answer a couple questions, uh, give a couple of people some feedback. For my listeners who are on Spotify or iTunes, when I say the chat, I'm referencing the chat room in Facebook Live because I'm broadcasting live from Facebook. Let's see what we got here. Give a couple of shout outs. Lloyd, what's up, man? Marjorie, how you doing? Blade Brown, what up? What up? Mark Klaus, how you doing? Avery, what's up? Lovely, how you doing? Jermaine, what's up? Uncle Alex, how you doing, man? Let me see. He said, F Zimmerman, I'll beat that punk until <laughs> he wants it to end and then make his end spectacular. Shout out right on, man, because wrong is wrong. Right is right. Zach, what up? Jenna, how you doing? Jim, how you doing? Oh, I'm Jim, I'm surprised you don't have an opinion about this. Jim Boston, what up, homie? Jared, how you doing? Good brother. See if we got any, um, he was just jogging. That's right, Uncle Alex, he was just jogging and that's heinous, that's terrible that a man can't even just enjoy a night's run without being gunned down. It's horrible and I think it sucks. Um, no, they were helping, yeah, I get that. Next time they have a clan meeting in Cabot, Arkansas, let's go stomp that stomp the crap out of. Let's get to the right people together and go eliminate that bull crap. Hey, Mark, that's what I'm talking about, man. That's the kind of uh, that's the kind of dedication that we have to have, man. We have to be willing to go snuff these people out. Look, man, you making life bad for me and my kids. I have a very unpopular opinion about slavery, and it's unpopular because most people stop hearing once they first, once I first say it. And here's the unpopular opinion about slavery. I said, the problem with slavery in this country is that we try to sweep it under the rug. Slavery isn't something that we should sweep, sweep under the rug. It's something that we should deal with. It's something that we should deal with. Because let me tell you something. White people should look at slavery and think, excuse me, Wow, man, we were really lost. We were doing horrible things to people. We did probably one of the most horrific things in the history of humanity to people. We're responsible for that. But thank God, God is good because he was able to remove the mud from our eyes and we came out of that and we're better for it. And black people, don't, don't sweep slavery under the rug. The same thing for black people. Man, we had to have the most worst kind of 
humanity demonstrated on us, just the worst, most barbaric things done to us, our language stole, kidnapped, everything like that, and we came out of it triumphant. So I feel like there's a victory there that people don't really talk about because what does that do to a man's soul when he enslaves another man, when he hurts another man, when he does another man that way? And to come out of that, that's a triumph, that's a victory, to see the error of your ways. And some saw it a little quicker than most, but for us to come out of it, it's a testament to our wherewithal. It's a testament to our character, the character of our ancestors. It's what's, what's inside of us, you know, that type of strength and everything like that. So I don't think it's something that we should sweep under the rug. I think that's the biggest mistake that gets made in this country. The media tries to sweep racism under the rug. Uh, society tries to sweep it under the rug. We even dance around it a little bit. Some of us, you know, in the workplace and things like that in the social settings, we try to sweep it under the rug as, as if it doesn't exist. And it does. And we need to acknowledge it one that's the first step to solving a problem is acknowledging it right so let's acknowledge that we do have a problem in this country with racism with prejudice everybody i don't care what anyone says prejudice is real uh here's a fine example if you see a little boy and he walk like this oh man i think he's gonna be gay that's prejudice prejudging that's what we do not everyone is racist but everyone is prejudiced and I, but racism is what needs to be eradicated. We need to deal with it. We need to root these people out. We need to get together and talk about it. And there's something that may not be popular for me to say, but I think that the uh, powers that be need to start. Start with an apology. I've seen the United States government apologize to every person that they have been to war with except black people. We can't act like slavery in this country didn't happen. We can't act like racism isn't real. We can't allow the United States government to do it because it starts on high. The bottleneck starts at the top. And we have to get those people involved in stuff like this so that these types of tragedies stop happening. We got to get them involved. And they, they like to act like, oh, we're so, we've come so far past any of that. You know, I really won't even uh, deal with the uh, issue of racism because it just, you know, <laughs> I mean, it, it, I mean it's, it's a non-issue. You know what I mean? When was the last time we had any problems? I mean, come on. It's, it's a problem. Let me tell you something. Anybody who's ever gone to the uh, country club in their city or anybody who's ever gone somewhere where predominantly uh, affluent Caucasian people frequent, they know that what I'm saying is true. This, it, it exists and it's real and we need to deal with it because if we, until we do, creeps, I'm going ahead and taking a side now. I've already framed it and I was impartial and I'm letting you know where I stand and I'm on the good brother of my side, uh, rest in peace. But creeps like the McMichael duo, we, they won't be able to hide if we collectively deal with the issue of racism. We allow this to happen because we refuse to deal with the issue of race. We don't want we don't want to deal with that. And that is the problem. That is the crux of the problem. Let me say that. That's the crux of the problem is the fact that we don't want to deal with racism. We think that because, well, I got six black friends, dude. You know what I mean? Like, And they come to my house all the time. They always bring potato salad. You know, they always tease me about my cooking. We think that because we have personal friends in our social circles and things like that, that racism doesn't stop. The world is much bigger than you and your four friends, okay? The world is much bigger than you and the 12 people that you have follow you on Facebook. The world is much bigger than that. This country is much bigger than that. And this stuff happens on a daily basis. The only difference between now and back in the day is there's a camera everywhere. So now this stuff used to happen all the time. It's only now it's put in our face. But the thing is, men and women, what are you going to do? When, when are we going to get together and link up and start getting these people out of the community? I'll tell you what. I've seen the old people do it back in the day when the boys were selling crack. We got on the phone, we called, we got the crack dealers out of the neighborhood, we got the prostitutes out of the neighborhood, we got the drug addicts out of the neighborhood. 
We have gotten every creep in society out of the neighborhood. It's time to get the racist people out of our neighborhoods. It's time to let make, make them know that they are not wanted around us. Make them know, hey, you got a problem with blacks? You got a problem with Jews? You got a problem with Koreans? Whatever the case may be, you got a problem with people based on their ethnicity and phenotype and small things like that? We don't want you around here because we're busy living life and we're busy progressing as human beings. We don't need people like you hanging around us, making life hard, creating bad news, because that's what this is, man. This is bad news. This is somebody's son, someone's brother, cousin, dad even, and he's gone now, and he's gone. And I feel personally responsible for this because I don't just chalk trash. I deal with Arshan, and I know that there have been times that I have recognized some racism, and I was just like, whatever, man. Dude's an idiot, whatever. These things have to be confronted. I'm not telling you to put, get a gun or go out on a mission or anything like that. Simple as conversation. When guys are having these fruitless conversations around you, you guys, you ladies, you men and women know what I'm talking about. The water cooler conversations that you walk up on and you try to act like you didn't hear because Lord knows I need my job and I don't want no trouble. No, it needs to be confronted. That's what the Human Resources Department is for. That's how you get them out of your workplace. And the ones that, that remain, oh, they're going to keep it to themselves. But eventually, let me tell you something I've learned about behavior. Behavior, you can't hide it for very long. It's going to reveal itself. And when it does, we have to root these people out. We go to our HR, we go to our councilmen, go to your aldermen. You got somebody live like that in your neighborhood? There's somebody at the city council to take care of folks like that and get them out from around you. How do you think they keep some of us from the low income communities out of their gated communities? Because they got councilmen and things like that who are making policies and stuff for them. And that's what we need to do. We need to be a, a part of these town hall meetings and stuff like that. And we got people like that in our neighborhoods. We need to get them out from around us. It's not okay to be racist around me. And I don't care who you're being racist around, who you're being racist toward, whether it be black or white, it doesn't matter. If you are that kind of person, until we as a people in the United States of America eradicate the mentality that holds one group of people above another pe group of people, we, we, we can't move forward. We can't be successful. We're going to continue to backslide and have these problems in our communities, and we're going to continue to fail at living life as human beings. My name is Arshan Wade. Thank you for listening. Have a good night.